Good evening, and uh, welcome to the opening of the 2014 Alvarez and Lennox Seminar Series here at Trinity University. My name is Aaron Navarro. I'm an Associate Professor of History here and also Director of the Mexico, the Americas, and Spain program. Um, this uh, year, our program is uh, extra special. Uh, because it unites for the first time two of the flagship real signature lecture series that Trinity has. The Lennox series that's uh, generously supported by the uh, Martha, David, and Bagby Lennox Foundation, a long-standing commitment, and the Alvarez seminar series that is uh, run within the MAS program um, that is supported by the Carlos and Malu Alvarez Fund for MAS. Uh, for the first time, we get to put these two together and have a sort of mega uh, series about this very important topic, uh, Chile and um, the New Song Movement, how this uh, inflects uh, social movements in the hemisphere. Uh, so we're very excited to get started with this. Uh, let me just um, thank a couple of people uh, at the beginning. Obviously, the uh, Lennox and Alvarez families for their uh, very generous support, uh, continuing support of these uh, series. And then also uh, some of our uh, collaborators uh, in the community, um, the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center uh, that is providing a venue uh, for our community concerts, which uh, Professor Spina will tell us about in a few moments here. Um, also, the San Antonio Museum of Art that is providing some very uh, interesting pieces for the art exhibit that's going to be going up in the Niedorf Gallery in the art building uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, local collector Bill Fisher, I don't know if Bill may be here tonight, but um, Bill Fisher is also providing some items from his very extensive collection of Pablo Neruda. Uh, memorabilia and uh, collectibles uh, for this art exhibit. Uh, so these community collaborators are really uh, very crucial for us in putting this program on. Uh, I also uh, have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Uh, one is uh, in regards to someone getting home. Uh, there are car keys that were left in one of the restrooms here. Uh, if you are missing your keys, uh, then we have them. Um, the other thing is seating. Uh, there are some of you standing around. There are some seats here still in the middle. There are also some seats up here in the front. Um, what we'll call for the evening the uh, presidential seating. With president Albert is here uh, with us. <laughs> Always wanted to sit next to President Albert and his uh, lovely wife, uh, Penelope. This is your chance. Uh, please, uh, there's room for everyone uh, to sit here. All uh, right. <laughs> And so uh, with that, let me just uh, in introduce you to the co-organizers of this series. Uh, putting on a series like this is a lot of work. It's worthwhile, and it's a lot of work. Um, and it took three of us uh, to do it this time. I'm one of the co-organizers. Um, another uh, is uh, Professor Arturo Madrid, uh, who is here. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> And uh, Professor David Spiner, uh, Chair of the uh, Sociology and Anthropology Department, uh, who will uh, come up and introduce our speaker. Well, it's great to see so many of you here on such a, a cold, cold day in San Antonio. Uh, in this series, we honor the legacy of the Chilean people's struggles with democracy, dictatorship, human rights, and social justice. Theirs is a struggle that has been emblematic of similar struggles around the world and one that people all over the world have learned from. It is no less significant than the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, which reached its peak during the same period as the Chilean struggle against military tyranny, and that we have also been thinking about recently with the passing of Nelson Mandela. Indeed, Bernice Johnson Regan, the great African-American singer, composer, and civil rights activist, wrote a powerful song that she performed with her women's a cappella ensemble, Sweet Honey in the Rock, titled Chile, Your Waters Run Red Through Soweto, making explicit the connection between the two countries' struggles for justice. Moreover, like the struggle against apartheid and many other struggles for equal rights around the world, Chile's struggle gave rise to a beautiful form of musical expression that was simultaneously the product of struggle and gave comfort and strength to those who engaged in it both in Chile and in the rest of Latin America. This music had a name, La Nueva Canción, The New Song, and featured poetic lyrics, indigenous instrumentation, and explicit social and political messages. It is for this reason that we have titled our series, Chile Canta al Mundo, Chile Sings to the World. And I'd like to briefly review with you the events that we have planned for our series. This is just the first of a number of them. Uh, this is the official poster for the series. Tonight, uh, we have, of course, a lecture by Steve Stern, who I'll, who I'll be uh, introducing in a moment. 
But a week from today, in the same room, we'll be having a lecture titled uh, 50 Years of Chilean New Song by the eminent musicologist from Santiago, Chile, Pablo, Juan Pablo Gonzalez. Uh, same time, same place, next week. Next Thursday night, we will be having a very special event called Winds of the People, Violeta Parra, Victor Jara, and La Nueva Canción Chilena. Uh, an evening of song and memories by two very prominent uh, and storied singer-songwriters in Chile, Elizabeth Morris, who is as Chilean as the night is long, in spite of her Anglo-sounding name, and Jose Cévez, one of the uh, longtime members and leading voices of the group Inti Ivani, that some of you in the audience may be familiar with. On February 20th, we'll have a very interesting event, uh, and this event, like the one on February 6th, will be in the uh, Parker Chapel in the evening. And it's called No Nos Moveran Solidaridad Entre Chicanos y Chilenos in California. We Shall Not Be Moved, Solidarity Between Chicanos and Chileans in California. That will include a great deal of music, but also um, some stories and reflection, and a brief presentation by uh, San Antonio's very own Antonia Castañeda, uh, Chicana and feminist historian, who will talk about the experiences of the Chilean and Chicano movements in California and their collaborations uh, together in the 1970s and 1980s. Something that we're very excited about that really was not part of the plan initially, but we owe a great deal of gratitude to Marian Ettinger of the San Antonio Museum of Art for making this possible for us. We will be exhibiting in the uh, gallery in the art building here, the Michael and Naomi Nirdov Art Gallery, uh, an exhibit of poems from Pablo Neruda's Canto General, Pablo Neruda, Neruda being the Chilean Nobel Prize winning poet, with illustrations by the Mexican painter David Alfaro Siqueiros. Uh, and this uh, is a really fabulous opportunity, and like my colleague uh, Aaron Navarro said, we will also have some uh, very uh, exquisite items from the personal collection of local Neruda memorabilia collector Bill Fisher. Uh, the opening for that will be on February 21st and will include music, poetry, uh, and uh, refreshments. The other thing that is very exciting for us is that we have a collaboration uh, for, for the first time um, on a Lennox seminar, and I think with the uh, Alvarez seminar as well, with uh, a, an important community institution here in San Antonio, the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center. And I'd like to bring up uh, Itza Carvajal to talk a little bit about two community concerts that will be taking place at the Esperanza on a couple of Saturday nights next month. just like the Nueva Canción Chilena is, but also because as a community that is founded by you know, immigrants, youth, women of color, low working income, um, LGBTQ, this fusion of people who have been considered on the outside, our roots are also based on the struggle that the Chilean people began with Allende and also throughout that whole struggle of Chile. Um, so we will be having two concerts. Um, one will be on February 8th at 8 p.m. and the other one will be February 27th, I mean 22nd at 8 p.m. as well. It will be hosted at the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center. For those of you who don't know where the Esperanza is, we're right next to SAC, um, we're this big gray building. We have been in San Antonio for about 27 years. We are considered a cultural arts center, meaning that we combine culture with the arts as a way to produce social change. All of our, our programming is based on this conciencia or this social consciousness that the arts is not something just to be, you know, looked at and, um, you know, appreciated, but also that it can move people, just like the Nueva Canción move people for social change. We believe that the arts plays a very heavy role in doing that. I will be selling tickets outside after the lecture, so if you're interested, price is $5, which is super reasonable. Remembering when I was a college student, $5 was nothing. I've paid a lot more for concerts. And um, 
I'll also have a copy of La Voz, which is our monthly newsletter. Um, for those of you who still want to you know, read a little bit more about the, the Chilean struggle, um, David did write a really great article that's featured in La Voz, so if you're interested in reading that, I'll have them to pass out at the end. Um, if you'll have any questions, I'll also be out there. You know, if you just want to come visit the Esperanza, if you want to get involved, you know, just our doors are open Monday through Friday from 10 to 7. So thank you, and I'd like to thank Bert Trinity. And if you'll have any questions, again, feel free to ask.